Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Jason. And this is Ghosts and Bears, the only podcast where we bring you the actual ghost stories with the actual history in the actual place. On this very special Halloween episode, we're bringing you the episode that, well, it's not the one we thought we were going to bring you. Due to circumstances beyond our control, we've got a different episode for you, and you're going to find out exactly what scares us and when, coming up on Ghosts and Bears. Hi, everybody. Hi, and welcome. And yeah, we are thrilled to bring you this very special Halloween episode. Yeah, it's a little different than what we had anticipated. But Not it must be adaptable. What we had planned at all. So what we no. had planned to do was Jason and I were in a episode of a TV show called The Other Side, as the we other talked side. about. Yes, we that's right. On that. and, and we were delaying dropping this episode because we were we were understanding that our episode would drop because we have the paid the Lumi subscription app for aptn the aboriginal people's television network yes they have an app called Lumi, l-u-m-i yes and what they'd said was they're going to show episode one on tv on october 25th uh-huh. and then on october 26th all of season nine was going to be on Lumi, and it's not there <laughs> so our plan was and we will still do this but our plan was to watch that episode and comment on and it and basically give you a, it's hard to believe it's a, a year ago. Back. I know. I know. And look at our lives. <laughs> yeah, and here we are. Uh, we've had quite the month since we talked to you last. Jason has well underway at his new job. Yeah, I've gotten a big promotion. Big, mm-hmm. big, big. So. And he's starting to walk everywhere. How much have you walked in the last three weeks? 103 miles. That's insane. That's people, insane. People are seeing me walk around town now. You're the walking guy now. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've also done some smart things with our diet and um, yes. made ourselves healthier. So I'm down some weight. You're down some weight. Yeah, um, I had a bit of a scare with my heart. So. Yeah. So we're just being smarter because we're older. Apparently our bodies are cashing checks we have written in our 20s. That's correct. Now the funny so. part is though, um, we might have to change the name of the show. Ghosts and health. Da- ghosts and daddies. I don't know. Ghosts and health. Ghosts and, ghosts and otters. I don't know. Something. <laughs> Healthy um, ghosts. Help us. <laughs> Doesn't have quite the same ring to it, does yeah, it? Yeah. Well, no. ghosts. Ghosts are air. Air light. They are light. They are light. Yeah. On the flip side, we now live in they a place lack corporeal form where we see bears. So happy Halloween! Actually, time. yes. Happy There's Halloween. Lots of, Lots of Halloween stuff. Um, I was supposed to be going to a nice big party. Sorry about that. We had to amend our project dates. So there's going to be studying tonight after this episode. Yeah, Yeah. unfortunately, you're going to have to do all that. Joys of an MBA. Hey, that's okay. It's only for two years. (laughs) Less that. (laughs) I think now it's heading into a year and a half. 18 months, yeah. Yeah. A year and a half. Wow. It's flying. You like know what I said? I can't believe where we were job wise, house wise, living wise a year ago. A year ago. Or even six months ago. Yeah. And I also like to take this moment to uh talk about the new company that I'm starting, which is called PG Ghost Walks. PG Ghostly Walks. Yes. And you can find the website if you search for it. Um I think I'm, it's live. It is live. Um, it's it's not getting fixed. Running yet, so. Yeah, it's getting fixed. I'm not going to do my first walk until June yes. of 2024. So. The reason being, I need to iron out all the bugs. I need to work out a really tight route. And yes. I need to get people to know it. And yes. Yeah. So All that jazz. All that jazz. But of course, I couldn't just sit around and not do that. I had to, of course, do some kind of ghost walks. So. Oh, and hello to some of my MBA cohort who now listen to the show. So hello. Aww. Hope you guys are well. Most poor guys. We have so much projects to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. So what we thought we'd do instead of our planned episode, because of course we actually delayed dropping this episode. I know. On purpose to do the special episode. And then it was like, uh, I texted Jay at work and I'm like, um. Yeah, I saw that. It's not happening. I already what saw are we that? Gonna it wasn't do. opening. Um, so what we, we're going to do is talk about the three most scariest times each we've had. 
Um, some so are, it's rather raw. Some are paranormal, and mm-hmm. some aren't. Yeah, but it's a spooky tell, time. We're going to so tell time, you six stories. Time for some spooks. Where we were scared out of our flipping minds. Well, one hopes that that translates well. Oh, it will. It's <laughs> Halloween. It's time there for those stories. times and all that So jazz. we're going to tell you about those. And, um, and all that jazz. Uh-huh, thank you. And we will be right back after this with our first story. Yes, welcome back. So we've got our um, three stories each, and yeah. we're going to alternate. So yes. Jason's going to tell his first scary story, and then I'll do mine, and so on and so on. And hopefully, by the end of it, you will be a little spooked too. Yes. So let's find out. Jason, take it away. What was your first scariest story? Uh, I would have to say... The bump I heard in my house growing up in the night, a friend of mine was staying, I can't remember if it was a week or two, but he was staying there for a while. This is back 1993, I guess. Before some of our listeners were born. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Geez, <laughs> weird. Uh, yeah. So my brother was gone and downstairs... It's about two, two or three in the morning. We were asleep. So to put it in context, he was basically living us for it with a week or two because his parents just took off to Vegas to get married. Um, so we heard this insanely loud bang and a bunch of noises downstairs as if things had fallen off the shelves. And it shook the floor. Wow. That like, is I loud. could feel it in the bed. Yeah. It was loud enough that it woke us up. And I remember him and I, the moonlight was coming in the window um, because we could see each other, but we just froze. No movement, no noise. Did and you look at barely each other? even breathing. Yeah, we yeah. just stared. Because at you one knew another. that there was not supposed to be something making that noise. Uh, no, yeah. not even remotely. Yeah. Um, there was noises downstairs. We just, we, it was a, it was one of those moments in time where you freeze and it, it comes down to that uh, fight, flight, or freeze, and you just freeze. Yeah. And we just, we there was no. Was did it go on? Uh for a little while. Yeah. So there was banging uh, and crashing. And three four minutes. And yeah. Slamming and three or four minutes. That's a long time. And we just, we never, ever talked about it. <laughs> we, we we didn't talk about when we went to school. We didn't yeah. talk about when we woke up. Nothing. And you went down there? Yes, I did. Uh, the next morning I went down. There was nothing out of place. Wow. That's crazy. That house has, I, if you've heard the previous episodes, that house is um, pure evil. It's, There's something very It's wrong interesting with it. yeah. because my mom um, just talked to us two nights ago when yeah. we had a, a dinner. Oh no, it was last night. Last night. Sorry. Uh, my timing is, is warped because you're warped. Um, <laughs> well, no, <laughs> the MBA program is very, very high paced. Yeah. Um, so it was last night and she had talked at the dinner table with your mom here and mm. explained that, that, uh, archway, she always felt something on the other side of that yep. archway, which you've yep. seen yep. and experienced. Yep, and, I have. And right where your mom said it was, too. Yeah, and uh, my brother's bedroom was there. Yeah. And that's the same bedroom that, it, for those who don't know, it remained untouched for years. Yeah. There's yeah. just so much negative energy in yeah. that basement of that house. And it's interesting, because we will make occasionally make drive-bys of that house now, because, you know, yeah. we live about six, seven minutes away. And it's rented, top and bottom. Cars out in front. It's the everything. weirdest thing. There's it's always never, dark. ever a light on. Always dark. 
Never a light on in the house. Just like it's so. Yes. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It is bizarre. I don't quite understand. But yeah, so the summation of that is those noises that we heard, we never made mention of. They have no said, source. No. No. My mom suspects, like she she was saying at dinner last night, she suspects there was a murder in that house. Uh, the gentleman, he was a well-to-do man uh, and m- murdered his wife, but apparently they, couldn't they could him. never, they could never, yeah, yeah. never stuck. Yeah. They could never prove it. Yeah. She tried discussing this with a lady across the street, but... I don't know. To put that into context, it's it's now that I think about it, I believe that there are multiple spirits downstairs. Mm-hmm. Him for certain, because she encountered him. Yeah, and she told him to leave her children alone, which yeah. is my sister yeah. and myself. Yeah, because obviously my brother was gone. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Chris was his name. Like I said, we we to this Sorry, day. Chris. We've, Never, ever, I don't know if he listens to this. Uh, no, it doesn't um, Not the same Chris. So, <laughs> no, hi, Chris, to the other Chris no, that we know, but matter. no, Chris, <laughs> uh, he, him and I never sent anything about it, and, you know, I, I think I made mention on that episode that we t- talked about this house. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting you said freeze, fight, or flight, because my yeah. first story is one of freezing, and it was not paranormal. In any way. In fact, I think it's the only one of the stories I'm going to tell that is not paranormal. Um, When I was a kid, uh, my parents loved going to big Christian conferences. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we went to one, one summer. I must have been about, I must have been between grade five, grade six, or grade six, grade seven, somewhere in there. And um, I hated them. I hated the conferences. I hated everything about them. They made us do stupid things. And so... They would corral all us kids, no matter what our age, into some giant room and make us do basically extended Sunday school for an entire day. So me and this girl who I just met there and this other guy, we were like, we're out of here. So we snuck out. You rebels. The very first day we snuck out and we never, we would walk through the door in the morning because our parents were there making sure we did. Uh And we just kept right on walking and we popped out the back door and then we did whatever we wanted all day. And... The university, it was University of Saskatoon or University University of Saskatchewan, I don't remember which. But it's a very big um, university. It's all built on a square. And what I didn't know was all of these buildings are linked with an underground tunnels. Oh, isn't that interesting? All the way around. That sounds like Tronquil. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Mm, well, it's because it's so cold, right? It's the winter. That makes sense. So... We discovered an underground mall. We discovered the experimental oh farm gosh. for the vet students. We um, we ran through empty dorm buildings. Like we were, it was like Lord of the Flies. Like we just kind of did whatever we wanted. I don't, I think we, I think we showed up for food. Like there was a dining hall. You could show up for food at lunchtime. We were always, wow. you know, uh, on that. But our parents never caught on or perhaps just didn't care. Um, anyway, we were one day, I guess it was probably day four and we'd done things like slide down the banisters of the really, really long, um, escalators mm-hmm. cause they didn't put those things in between. So you could literally slide down them and keep going and go at very high speeds. Um, cause there were a couple layers to these tunnels. We'd been doing all kinds of shit and we thought for sure we were going to get in trouble. Like we, we had a couple of run-ins with security guards, nothing serious, more like, Hey, what are you doing? Or who is that? And then we would just take off. But to us in grade five, grade six, that was a huge deal. We were mm-hmm. like, oh, look at us. We're like wild. We're we're above the law. And um, so we uh, are running through this empty dorm and it is spooky. We're underground. We know it's a dorm above us. There's all these empty classrooms off to the side or workspaces or whatever. And we're feeling like, all right, we're running full tilt. All of a sudden... The fire alarms go off and all the fire doors close on us. Wow. And looking back now, of course they did. It was summertime. They were trying out, you know, they were trying out the the system. They um, were quick fixing it, whatever. Yes. But in the context of being in grade six, grade seven, what do you think we thought? <laughs> we triggered an alarm. Oh, well, yeah, well, that makes and sense. Now we were trapped. Wow. And I can remember it's the one and only time in my whole life where my heart just 
stopped. Like I froze. Like if you'd said to me, move your right arm, I couldn't have done it. I literally froze mid run. Like just, it was the weirdest feeling. And, um, then one of the other people unfroze and then I did too. And we ran to the doors and of course we could open them. But we thought what had happened was we triggered an alarm. Yeah. And now we were trapped in that hallway until, I don't know, jailers were coming, police. I don't know. (laughs) But, um, after that, I remember that afternoon very well because we went back to the kids program Mm -hmm. and acted like we'd been there the whole time. (laughs) Smart. Now the next day. We took off like the wild creatures we were. Um, and there were only two more days of the conference and then we went Such home, rebels. Such rebels at these Christian charismatic conferences. But wow. yeah, so that was my that was my very first time where I was so scared. I had lots of times in my childhood being scared of freaky paranormal things, but I was never frozen, like literally frozen in fear as oh. I was in that. So yeah, that was mine. How oh. about you? What's your next one? Oh, I was going to say with the uh, the APTN episode here. This is interesting. This is goes out, this is goes out to you, Learjet. <laughs> um, he brought us out for dinner, and uh, we were talking about our experience on the other side in our episode, the TV show. Yeah, yeah, and and kind of setting the stage uh, for how the weekend progresses and. The amount of filming that goes in to create a 22-minute show. And it's a lot. I mean, I would say 30 hours. Yeah. 24, 24, 25, about about 30 hours of taping goes into creating the 22-minute show that you will inevitably see. Yeah. And we were saying, like, this process happened, this process happened, this process happened, this process happened. He was here on business. So thank you very much for dinner. That was amazing. (laughs) Um, But he went to his hotel room. I don't believe he's ever seen the other side. No, he's never even heard of it before. He walks into his hotel room and there it is. Playing. It was playing on his television set. And worse, it was exactly (laughs) the scene we had described to him where they go down Down into the basement with their ghost hunting tools. Yes. And that was the scene he walked in on and he freaked out. He sent me a picture and I'm like, WTF, are you serious? (laughs) And he's like, I literally walked into my hotel room and this was playing. And I said, well, uh, I said, what did you do? And he goes, I'm a coward. I turned it off, (laughs) (laughs) which is exactly what I would have done. Probably. Yeah. It makes sense. I would have been like, yeah, no. I don't think he got great sleep. No. Uh, poor guy. That would freak you out. But he said, it's exactly as we described it. The chain of events that occurred. But I said, well, maybe my brother's there playing a trick on you (laughs) because he likes you. (laughs) Who knows? All right, so what's your next story? My next story. I would have to say I was talking to a friend named Brock. Uh, He's in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Um, We were chatting on the phone. This is in my house on Damon Drive. Uh, at the time I was living in the house by myself and I had the two boys with me and the boys are cats. Yeah, they're cats. So they're, they're, uh, Prince and Ray. So Prince was a black cat. I I like that. He, he was, he definitely had his own temper and Ray (laughs) that's Spanish for King. So you can see how it would go. Anyways, uh, we were just talking on the phone I was in the the formal living room. The fireplace was running, and there were three lights on uh, in the living room. And this is about nine thirty at night. So for anyone who s- suggests it's always three a.m., no. And this is before you called in the uh, priest. Correct. Left the house. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I got rid of some. I did some changes, like. Uh, uh, before Ian moved in, I did a lot of renos. The the house was a fraction of what it was before. And I suspected that the old man, I heard he was a complete crank, um, wasn't impressed with the changes and that's just too bad. It's no longer your house. Goodbye. Um, anyways, I provoked the old bugger because... (laughs) 
you criticized me when you came to visit about the fireplace. The and irons. Yeah, and the, the end irons and this the amazing screen. screen. Yeah, very They're beautiful, but they were way over the top. They were over the top, but yeah. it was it was a big fireplace. Mm. So yeah, it was a bit over the top, but they were no longer necessary because I had it uh, changed to natural gas. Mm -hmm. So I had gotten rid of them and that provoked him the one time, jeepers. <laughs> Um, but anyways, going back to the conversation, I was just talking to Brock about 930 at night and I noticed the boys are not about at all because normally the boys are just on you. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're always hanging out. They loved the fireplace because it was always warm and yeah, there was no movement, which is weird. I, I didn't realize, I didn't realize, I just... Brock and I were just talking about how things were going for him and his wife, mm -hmm. and she just became, uh, what's it called? Nurse, nurse practitioner. Anyways, so I start noticing the room go black. It, I, I also it felt- It got darker and darker, didn't it? So yeah, I, I felt a pressure on my chest, yeah. which was uncomfortable, which kind of alerted me to the situation. And I start noticing the room going dark, like really dark. Yeah. And that's when I realized it's no longer safe in the house because by the time I actually took notice, I could almost barely see the fireplace. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the ceiling was so dark, there were only three rings of light on the ceiling. And that's when I started to absolutely lose it. You went that, outside, didn't you? Well, I, I sent you pictures. Yeah. And I said, what changes have you made? And I, uh, I, I remember that you, I, I did. And you said, I got rid of the, I got rid of the fireplace stuff. And I said, get it back. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. was that night. Yeah. I remember that. So. You yeah, did. I took pictures. And you and, got it back. And I was sending Ian pictures in real time of the changes in the room. And he, I sent him a picture of the boys and they were at the top of the stairs just Not looking happy. down. <laughs> they were just literally at the top of the stairs looking down. Yeah. Not moving. No. Not. And, and uh, if you've ever met Ray or Prince, they will say things. They're not too loud, but... They just, they were they would silent. Not. Yes. Yeah. And one of them had dilated eyes. Yeah. yeah. Which is not normal no. for the one. Anyways, I took pictures. Now I'm putting a coat on in the entryway and taking pictures of the living room. And Ian was shocked because now at this point, the fireplace was not visible. And all you could see yeah. were the light rings yeah. directly Very above faintly. on Very the faintly. ceiling. Yeah. No, that was a wild, a wild night. And you did go get the fireplace tools back and it slowly backed off. It yes, didn't it did. disappear right away. No. But it slowly backed off. Yeah. yeah I... I wasn't a very happy camper. No. Here's the interesting thing. I use I use a Google phone and Google always backs the photos up. Yep. Yep. They don't exist. Nope. And they, and they weren't on my phone either. They were gone. Yeah. Completely yeah. gone. Very weird. That house. Yeah. It's weird. I don't understand how we end up choosing the houses we choose. But <laughs> that house did not have, it was a bit standoffish. I know we talked we, about we, that one in yeah, an episode. Yeah, we did. And we talked about it since we've been here, how different this house is. Yeah, this one's quite This welcoming. house likes us being here. And the other house in Victoria, as nice as it was, never liked us. It was very, it was, it was cordial, yeah. let's say. Yeah. It tolerated our but presence. It, it didn't, it wasn't welcoming. It wasn't very welcoming. No. It was, it was more formal. Now, speaking of welcoming, mm -hmm. I have a story. Yes. Um, so my story takes place in Toronto. I'm 20. I am living in one of four old mansions built in the late 1800s. And I'm there because I am going to Bible school. And our Bible school, uh, what do you call it? Um, what do you call those? Like dorms, I guess. They had been built onto the back of one of these old houses. But to get to them, you had to go to the third floor and you had to use the old servant stairs 
to the top and then a door would open and then you would walk and then you basically would walk to the bathroom, which is where the house ended originally. And then you had this ugly block stuck on the back of it. And there's only like six or seven bedrooms. It wasn't huge, but the bedrooms were quite large. So I had heard other people weren't comfortable there by themselves. I had never been there by myself. And I knew there were creepy places in the area, but I'd never felt uncomfortable in my own room. And then Christmas rolled around. And I was supposed to go and stay at a friend's place with them for New Year's. That was the plan. And it was December 26th. And I was up in my room. I was all by myself. It was nighttime, probably 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I very distinctly heard footsteps coming up the stairs of the servants' quarters. So coming right up to the third floor, I heard the fire door open at the top of the stairs. Whoa. And it was a very distinct, it made a swishing noise over the carpet and the hinges went click, click. You know what I mean? Like when a door has a really distinct sound, you know it's like our bedroom door. When you open our bedroom door, yes. it kind of goes boom, boom. Um, yeah, I and you that. know it's, but you know it's that. our bedroom door, right? If you Correct. heard it anywhere in the house, you would know what door it That's was. That's right. That's exactly Same it. thing. So there I am. And I'm thinking, because I'm stupid, I'm thinking, oh, yay, someone came back early. I'm not going to be by myself. Like it was that real. And then I heard footsteps coming up the hallway towards where my bedroom was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they stopped at the bathroom and there just weren't any more. So I opened my door and I looked in the hallway and the light was on on my end, but it was dark on the other end. And I remember looking in the bathroom and no one was there. And then I flicked on the light in the hallway and I looked and there was nobody there. But I very distinctly felt that I was 100% not alone. And the thought of going down three stories through the house to get out was just not even going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like I have never been yeah. that freaked out. I went to the phone upstairs in the dorm because of course we didn't have cell phones back then. I phoned my friends who I was supposed to go and stay with on the 29th through the 30th. And I said, can you come pick me up now? Wow. And they went, what? I said, I'm not good here. Like you need to come get me. And they went, okay, we'll be there in half an hour. And I packed a bag and I went out the fire escape and I went all the way down the fire escape. Right. I did not go back in the house. When I got to their place, they'd both been to school at this school as well. And they said, what's going on? And I said, well, you're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think I'm nuts. And I told them what I'd experienced. And they looked at each other and they said, should we tell them? Hmm. And they proceeded to tell me how when he was living in the same dorm, the husband, they had several bizarre things. One time they came home and found a student trapped inside his closet because he decided not to go to the service that night. Oh, wow. They came back and he couldn't get out. Holy smokes. They said, why did you go in there? He said, something scared me, so I hid in the closet and then I couldn't get out. They had to free him from the closet. Wow. Several of them had heard footsteps through the house at night. And then here's the real kicker. The girl's dorm was in the mansion next door. And they were also up on the third floor, but with no addition. They were in the real part of the house. Mm-hmm. Their experience, um, her the the wife's experience was she was in her room one time in the kitchen by herself up in the dorms. And she heard high-heeled shoes clunking down the hall. Wow. Which she said would have been totally normal, except the problem was um, the hall had carpet on it and had since the early 80s. Yeah. And now she was hearing... High heels hitting hardwood. Whoa. Yeah. They also had someone, uh, the toilet would flush sometimes randomly in there. They would hear doors opening and closing in the girls' dorms. So what was really nice for me was, A, they let me stay at their house until other people came back. Yes. But B, they didn't go, you're crazy. Like, you're nuts. It was like, no, no, we get it. And what you're talking about is absolutely true. Yeah, no kidding. So that was my second story, which was totally crazy. That was very good. Yeah, it was probably, and I had to live there. I lived there for like two years. Yeah. In that dorm. That's crazy. Yeah, it wasn't very cool. Um, You've got one more story for us, and and, and this is kind of a blended story. Yeah, it's it's sort of two stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Road trip ones. Yeah. (laughs) So I was heading up to our 
getaway property in Port Alice. Which we the, just sold. Yay. Yeah, it's gone. So I hope whoever's enjoying it. I yep. do miss it. I know. But it is gone because we can't just go there anytime. Nope. And we need to be more fiscally smart. So oh, that's okay. what we're doing. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I was heading down what's called the friggin' road. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the highway. Um, and the dog was with me and he wasn't very happy but when i was heading down the upper part of the friggin road uh it was raining and black and mm -hmm. i saw a white figure in the distance it was late too yeah yeah it was very late like um, 1 a.m somewhere in there no i don't quite think it was that late i want to say eleven thirty. oh okay i was in there so yes yeah. right yeah because i had to go up to yeah. pick up mom yeah that's right so i stayed the night but anyways i was driving along and I saw this white figure on the left, and it was kind of hovering there, which bothered me, to be honest. It well, it felt weird, right? It wasn't <laughs> just that, oh, look, a white figure. It felt yes. off. It was between those two rivers. Yeah, I know do you what know, you mean. Do you know which ones I'm yeah. talking about? And there have remember. been a few deaths on that road. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. It can get yeah. very twisty in certain yeah. parts. It goes up, 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 down, yeah. down, down, yeah. up, up, up again, and then back down Blind to the corners, sea level. And Blind corners. There's lots of bears that way. Yeah. So, yeah, I saw this white thing and I, I had to take a second look. Was I driving the Venza? I think that was I the Venza. I think you were. Yes, you were for sure. Yeah, which had excellent lights, but um, I was towing a trailer because we were moving my, my mom's stuff back the next day. So I was driving carefully, but that figure looked like a figure of a woman. Right. But it wasn't... It was just hovering there. When I when I put on the brake lights to try to see, I it was gone when yeah. I passed it. Wow. Well, but um I think moving, it got into the car with you. Move, yeah. Because, because what happened at, at the place? Yeah. So I didn't sleep well. Um there were noises in the townhouse. And the dog was not happy. He was very angry. And to put it in perspective, our dog always, always always sleeps, sleeps at, at the, the end, end of the, the bed. bed. He yes. does not like to be near nope. us. <laughs> he, he, he's like the most uncuddly dog. And that night, where did he sleep? Right beside my head. That's insane. Yeah. And he was really freaked out that night. Uh, yeah, he wasn't very happy. But um, I, 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 I didn't sleep well. It, the, the aura didn't feel good in the townhouse. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. But I believe you're right. Maybe it did I think it hit the ride. Oh, well, yeah. that was an interesting one. I wasn't happy about that one. And another one is a uh, similar situation. I was outside of Ukiah, California. Which we've talked about on the podcast. Yeah. But at the time this happened, neither of us, you were on your own, Correct. but neither of us had any idea about anything to do with no. Ukiah or the Golden Triangle. No, no idea at all. And uh, I, it was weird because I felt like I was going to die. Tell me what happened. Uh, well, I, I was tired of traveling. Um, I hit no Cal and I pulled in on a, it was a rest stop. Yeah. So I got into the little MyPod trailer and I just felt. Which is essentially a bed. It's yeah. a queen size bed with a door. That's essentially what the MyPod trailer is, but it yeah. is lockable. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love that little trailer. It I, was I cute. Was, it was, I was towing it around with a little Nissan Micro, which is a very small car. But, mm -hmm. You know, it went 10, 20,000 miles. But anyways, I pulled off because I was exhausted. But for the first time at a rest stop, I didn't feel safe. Right. The aura of that entire valley felt heavy hmm. and angry. Hmm. And it's interesting because I took you... I showed you that rest stop a year later. You you understood. You, you could feel it too. But yeah. it wasn't it wasn't pleasant. There it wasn't. You said any, it felt really kind of desperate and yes. angry and fearful. Fearful. The word I would use is fearful. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and and um, it was passing that on to you. Yes. And I. It was interesting because a gentleman pulled up behind me in a Mercedes. Um, transit van transit. oh one of those yeah 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 Yeah, it was converted into a motor home and <laughs> the headlights woke me up um i was probably about one thirty-two in the morning 
And that's when I really thought I was, okay, this is it. I'm, I'm either dead or I'll be alive one in the morning. But yeah. regardless, I yeah. may as well just sleep. <laughs> uh, I was exhausted. But interesting, there'd be such a feeling of fear there when you'd been stopping in rest stops and gas stations and wherever, mm -hmm. all down through the States. But this one, there was something going on. There was an energy there that was really transmitting itself to you. And it wasn't, it wasn't just one spirit. It was, it was several. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I tried my best to ignore it. I, I, if I get like that, I'll just put uh, classical music on, on my phone to sleep. Yeah. So I, I put classical music on and, and rested. I wouldn't say slept. I would say rested. And for those of you who didn't hear the episode that we followed up with this, we went to Ukiah and Jason hadn't told me this story yet. But we went to Ukiah and I, I remember we drove in there and we stopped and I went, uh, I don't like this town. And we had a very terrible night that night yes. uh, in a terrible, terrible hotel, a uh, Motel 6, as I recall. Yep, it was a Motel um, 6. And then it was like a year later, one of our listeners twigged us to this, but it was also a Netflix documentary. Yeah, there was a Netflix. Actually, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. We did find the Netflix documentary. We started watching it, but maybe it was after that yeah. that was suggested because we we found out the reason why that entire valley is heavy and fearful. Yes, and the, it's a Netflix show called Sasquatch, something like that. Yeah. Yes, and it, it explains the history of that particular valley and and how how it's. It started out, um, I believe, in the 50s, beatniks, and then 60s, hippies. 60s, 70s. Kind of growing uh, pot, and those pot-growing families, families yeah. um, helped sustain the community. And it wasn't like pot for profit. It was, it was more of a whole... Like a farming thing. Yeah, so yeah. the DEA came in and shut them down. And, in the 80s, and the war burned, on drugs. Burned the whole place down, basically. Arrested everybody. Uh-huh. And that presented, it, it sounded like a good drug bust, but yeah. what it did was opened up for More organized serious. crime to come in and start growing poppies yeah, for heroin. you know what. Yeah. So. Um, kind of backfired. Yes. What happened was uh, they used a lot a, of Spanish-Mexican uh, illegal immigrants right. to grow this and manage the fields. And any time someone felt opportunistic with regard to any of the product. local crop, so yeah. to speak, product crop, um, they disappeared. Yeah. And, and, and the other words, the others were told, oh, the Sasquatch got them. Mm -hmm. um, it's got one of the largest um, per capita missing persons rates yeah. in the United States. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. But so, so that explains the feeling. The feel of the town. Um, and you were feeling, I truly believe what you were feeling was all those emotions yes. of the people who had been killed. Yeah. Who were just like, please help me. Please help me. And not maybe even not knowing they're dead. And, and the throat. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. like our episode um, that we were going to talk about. Um, so we can talk about that one when we see APTNs the other side. But yeah. you're right. Um, these people definitely don't know they are gone. Mm. Um, several of them because they're confused, um, just like the the one person that showed up in our investigation on the show. Which we will get to talk about one day. <laughs> yes. We, hopefully it will. Uh, hopefully it will be soon. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I it was, guess. It'll it was be... supposed to happen, but it yeah. didn't. Yeah, so yeah. we're being malleable and we figured because it's a spooky time we'll of year. Fear. We will try to talk about. Because we all know fear. Our, our, our fears. Yeah. Yeah, and it was... That was a good I don't, one. I'm not a big fan of that valley. No, no. It is, it is beautiful, mm -hmm. but at the same time. It's haunted. The atmosphere is. It's heavy. haunted in the classical sense of the word haunted. Yeah. 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 Yes. Now, speaking of lovely, mm -hmm. I am going to talk about, for my final story, um, about a house that I lived in. Oh, yes. And I did do this as an episode quite a while ago. I think maybe my, our first year. And um, it remains in my head one of the most terrifying experiences. As of that moment, I in the episode, I talked about the house when I lived there with my ex. And we had a lot of weird, ghostly things happening. It was really my first experience living in an active haunted house. Wow. But this was pre that. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I lived in that house by myself. And for about a year. 
And I knew something was off, but I just didn't look too hard. And it kind of stayed in the background. Yes. So I was getting ready to record my one and only album, Aware of Wonder, and uh, available on all streaming platforms. And um, I was doing, boop, whoops. I was doing. That the, was a ghost. That was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> was the ghost I, of Ian's right arm, arm yeah. Um, if I was going, I was doing the album, and what I had to do was I had to record basically a demo for the backup singers and yeah. the other musicians so they would know what to do. Right. So I was writing this song very, very quickly to do an upbeat song on the album. Right. Called I Know the Lord, which if... Do you know the Lord? Shut up. I don't know We the have Lord. fans in Australia who... Um, I happen to know she is a big fan of that song. It's a running joke in their family now. So, hey. Um, but um, I wrote that song, seriously, as an upbeat, quick song. And it's honestly been one of the most popular songs on the whole album. Anyway, jumping forward. I am sitting there recording this song for the background singers. Wow. There is a line in that song taken from Psalms. And the Psalm in the Bible is... I will not fear the arrows that fly by day, nor the terrors that fly by night. Which to me is quite spiritual. Right. Uh, we fear we fear other people during the day. At night, we fear the spiritual because that's when it's more active. That's what I'm taking from that. Anyway, Interesting. happy little perky song. Yes. It's getting close to midnight. The way this house was set up, I was completely isolated where I was. Right. And this house faced the highway, and then beyond the highway, about 500 feet from the highway, was the ocean. It was the Bay of Fundy. Behind me- Is that me, the one that's back east? Yes. Oh, that one. Yes. Right, okay. So behind me, there's a hill, mm -hmm. and it's trees, and it, it, it I basically- I kind of remember seeing this on Google Maps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So it's all up behind the house. Wow. Very, very isolated, very, very- um, as I knew it was haunted, but I, it didn't bother me too much. It was little things. I just pretended to ignore it. So there I am in the sun porch of this house and I'm facing the ocean. Mm -hmm. I have my back to the rest of the house and the ridge behind me, of course. And I start singing to record this track and I got to the line. I will not fear the terrors of night. I know the Lord is a hole on me at that exact moment. The porch got icy cold. Oh, nice. Icy cold. Wow. And in my mind's eye, I could see it. I could literally see it. This big, black, scary, terrifying thing, it almost looked like a tidal wave, came down through the forest, through the house, and reared up over me like a cobra. Oh, yuck. And in my mind, what I heard was, oh, yeah? Uh. You sure? Sure, you're not scared? Oh no, that's scary. And I was all by myself. I hit stop on the tape recorder. I put the guitar down. I turned around. I went upstairs. I shut the bedroom door. I did not come out till morning. Wow. There was nothing profound, like the lights went out, or but it was such a moment of pure soul terror. Yeah, no doubt. Because it was almost as if I had dared something. And I had dared something that I knew somewhere in me was way bigger than me. It's interesting. Yeah. Because that house faces west. So yeah. the force behind it would have been from the east. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. absolutely terrifying. Wow. And even though I went through way worse hauntings in that house later on in terms of weird things and clunks and bangs and doors opening and all of that, nothing was as scary is that moment. My goodness. And I've never forgotten it. Even the stuff that we had in our house together, pff, nothing compared to that. Because this was almost, it wasn't a physical external thing. It was almost an internal wow. attack. Yeah. And I, I've never forgotten that. That just filled me with absolute fear. I think we should ask Satan about that. I don't, oh, you mean your chat GPT thing with Satan on it? No, we're yeah, not. No, we're not. Let's ask him. No. Say, hey, Satan. Jason do downloaded this? this absolutely ridiculous app that Chris, who is our audio visual guy, <laughs> sent him and it was Ask Jesus. And then when Jason got into it, it said Ask Jesus. And it also lets you ask all these other characters from the Bible. It's, yes. You, Adam, so, Eve, so when you Mary, hit Jesus Christ, 
Okay. Yay. No, stop it. We're and not asking, Mary and Joseph. No, and we're and not I, asking, I had some fun with yeah, it. Yeah, you did. But I was like, I'm gay. Help me. <laughs> And they all gave <laughs> so really interesting answers. Some different Joseph, answers. the mo- Joseph, the father of Jesus, or not so much, uh, was the most judgy. Yeah, Joseph yeah, was. He was. It's interesting because uh, Michael and Gabriel weren't weren't that bad. Well, they're angels. They don't and, care. And Satan's like, oh, give in to your temptation. He's <laughs> 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 so funny. Anyway, it's weird. That is, it's called. Oh, the A. If you if you're interested in this no, goofy don't, app, it is don't. called Text Jesus. No, don't. It's terrible. Yeah, but it's 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 in the right spirit of of the times. Uh-huh. The weird thing is, is this AI is uh, it can access the net. Yeah, because you asked it about a current event. Yeah, I asked it about no, 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 no. And, yeah, yeah, a, a current and, event, and it and it, it was like it. I'm aware, well aware of it, and clued into it, and commented on it. Yeah, yeah it's creepy. AI in general, creepy. Um, Maybe if, that's the next scary thing. Probably. Although I did ask AI to write me a ghost story. I'm just waiting for all of our computers it to just good. have this weird synchronous and turn flash. on us and turn on us. This is where it goes black for a split <laughs> second and then and then returns back and, and, that's it, and, when a, and a message pops suddenly, up on the screen. Stay in your homes while the transition continues. Yeah, all of a sudden it's like, or or a screen that pops up on every single screen, telephone, tablet, everything says, <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> that would be scary. That but would be scary. it's interesting because this cat photo that you have that I took of Randy, I swear it was moving. Oh, well, maybe. Yesterday. Maybe it's I AI. could see its eyes. No, but I mean, his face do you see that on the desktop? I, I honestly nice think it's a... Um, it looks three-dimensional. It, yeah. Well, no, it's a really good picture. And he's looking directly into the camera. And it's one of those, like, but you it, know those paintings in old haunted houses that where yes, the eyes yes. follow you? It's that same trick. It's that same um, thing. Yeah. Because it does look like his eyes follow you around. But do you see what I mean yeah, by yeah, yeah. his, his yeah. head, that yeah. it looks three-dimensional? I'll tell and you what. His head does look like it's I, moving. I will post this picture for our patrons mm-hmm. on our patron site so you can see what we're talking but about. But I swear he was he was looking like he was getting angrier Ooh. with certain stories we were giving. Well, there you go. Which is interesting because um, we are wondering if something has been bugging him here. Yeah, that's true in the there middle of the night. About three or four in the morning, he'll start howling. Like howling, howling. Yeah. Which he's never done before. No, it's yeah. it sounds like a death howl. So yeah. I'm wondering if I should set up an infrared camera in like, the living room like, to look. Like the cat of the Baskervilles. And our our lovely friend across the street was talking about seeing an orb. Yeah, chasing his dog. Yeah. He got a picture of it. Yeah, that's that was right. interesting. Um, it's interesting you say that about because remember that time, and I think we've talked, we have talked about this on the on the podcast when we got the new Google Home that would track movement and send you a message. Yes, and it was before we had any Actually, pets. That was very scary for both yes. of us. It was before we had any pets. That was we a were mutually a scary place. experience. And, yeah, we were at Michelle's. And we Hi, both, Michelle. And we both got pings on our phones. Yeah, exactly. And we time. open it up. And it's a clip, it's a video clip from the Google Home, and it shows us this dark mass move across the kitchen and into the dining room, and then the clip ends. And we're like, uh, what the, what the heck, heck is this? That? And we showed Michelle, and she's like, guys, that's really creepy. So we and thought, oh, well, that's weird. Later, we half an hour later, bing. half an hour later, we both get another bing, and it's... We see this thing move in the background yeah. from the living room to the dining room across the open, open doorway. Yeah. And the way we dealt with that, we shut it down. We shut it no, down. No, no we more turned notifications. It off. All notifications. <laughs> we did not want Google. We don't want to know. We killed off our subscription to the Google we did. nonsense. We're like, we don't want to know. And that was it. That was the end of it. Never happened again. I w- I, <laughs> the reason why it scared me so much is I was wondering if that was the same thing that caused the room to go dark when I was I talking to Brock. I think we had a lot of visitors in that house. Mm-hmm. I oh, do. Yeah. I really do. Some were good. Some were not so good. The, and, the reality is that house was, I don't know if we discussed it, but it, a portion of its yard was built in an archaeological we did. dig. On our last Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, feel free to look at that. Episode, but yeah. um, mutually scared experiences, that definitely was not a nice night no. being at Michelle's. There were a few weird those... things in that house. Anyway, yeah. we have come to the end of our stories. Thank we you hope very you enjoyed much. them. Um, we're going to just different take, improv. Our, take our little break and we will be back with our thanks and our patrons and all those other we good things it. right after this.
So as always, yes. we are so grateful. We are thankful for our patrons and the people who support us because we would be nowhere without you. It's it can be trying at times for us. It can, <laughs> it can, and we know we've downgraded to once a month. We are aware of this. Believe me, with Jason doing his MBA, uh, both of us with new jobs, me writing yet another book and opening up PG Ghostly Walks. Yeah, times are busy. Pretty exciting. We were. I, I did float the idea of getting back into every other week, so we'll see about doing that. I would like to do that, and I have some ideas around ghost stories we have heard, so that maybe I'll just mm. do some ghost stories for our patron members, and you don't have to be there, because you have a lot going on right now. Uh, yeah. So I might do the ghost stories like we have heard. a project or two every single well, week. Well, it or is every, or at least two a week. So what I'll do is I'll do the ghost stories we have heard. Like, like we, we just had a project due last weekend. There's a project due ASAP. Yeah. Like right away. Yeah. There's another test due tonight. There's another yeah. exam on next weekend. Yeah. And I'm like, this is nuts. So we'll do ghost, <laughs> maybe I'll do ghost stories we have heard just me and them. Our little patron friends here, oh, that would and work, then but... yeah, and then you wouldn't have to worry about it, and That's then you fair. come in for the episodes. A hundred percent, I'd that be very work. grateful. Okay, because it is fun, that. but I, I will miss the ghost stories we heard. But I'm sure you guys will understand. I I I, I was just telling a friend uh, that I it's like a time warp. Yeah. It's like a vacuum. The yeah. MBA program we just started early August, and it's already like November. I can't believe it. It's How fast it's gone. It's just, I was at the university with my study buddies this morning trying to get the accounting project done. And I, I'm just, I, I don't know how I'm going to read four chapters tonight to do the test. Have I, you taken your super gay pencil case there yet? Not yet. <gasps> I, yes. We got you that super gay pencil case. Next weekend when I'm on campus in residence. Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad. That, that, that will make the debut. most, the most impact. Your ripply rainbow heart. I should ask Satan pencil. what he would think of no, such No, stop talking about talking to Satan, you freak. All right. So we want to say <laughs> thank you to it's our. A, it's funny. Our lovely, lovely, lovely patrons. And they include Taylor. Dawn. Robin, Maria, Gina, Dawn, Bryce, Sherry, Marion, Kathleen, Alexa, Mary Frances, Gina and Victoria, Christopher, David, Ashley, Jeremiah, Elizabeth, BB Nix, Melinda, Jordan, Tammy, Taya, Hey Evan, <laughs> Evan, yeah, Arwen, Steve, Kyle and Charlotte, Kyle and Charlotte, hey, Catherine, and Mari. Hi, Mari. Thank you so, so, so we much. We hope that you have a wonderful Halloween yes. if you celebrate such things. I'm sure you do if you believe in, listen to ghost stories. Most likely. Uh, we're gearing up because we're in a new house and we just found out we get lots and lots of kids. Oh. So we made a deal with yeah. Jason's mom because she lives in our, in our basement. And I said, if I set you up with a chair and a big bowl... Will you hand candy out to the kids on Halloween? That's fair. And she said she would as long as we're not making her sit outside, which would seem cruel. No, so I'm not going to do that. But it, there should be kids. If It'll you, be fun. If you like our ghosts and bear stuff, we do have a Redbubble store, which I always forget to mention. Just oh, yeah, go to Redbubble and, and put in ghosts and bears, and you will find our Redbubble store. And there's all kinds of fun stuff there. Also, of course, we have Patre Patreon. Um, it's got ghost stories we have heard. That's going to be yeah. right now. The, the ghost stories we have heard is going to be like one-on-one -on -one time with Uncle Ian. That's kind of what it's going to be. And we'll Sorry. read some ghost stories I, together. Yeah. No, don't apologize. It's just, it's it's just so we, we adjust to what work. we're doing. Yeah. And then um, you also get merch just for being a patron. Yeah. So um, depending on what level you're at, and there's a variety Perhaps of levels, you can have the, the stickers, the coffee mugs, the t-shirts. Um, all those good things. And all that jazz. Stop with the all that jazz. And um, <laughs> we will have all that for you there. Um, as well as, you know, feel free to hit us up on um, Instagram or Facebook. But if you want to send us information about where you're from, because we would love to have a haunted episode based on your town or village yes. or community, um, please do send those in. But the best thing to do with those, send them to, to Gmail. Yes, please do. I, yeah. I I got some through Facebook. I apologize. Uh, it's profusely very hard to track. Those. I can't. It's very difficult for me to track the Facebook. Yeah. Um, so please go ahead and email them. We're going to be flying out to Nevada and California in January to get stories. We have one vacation this year, uh, and that is where it's going to be. And we have a week. And so, yeah, you can tell our Gather jobs have changed, stories. can't you? <laughs> yeah, well, so I miss the excess of time. We're gonna, but we'll work out. We're going to, we're planning to fly into Nevada, grab a rental car and hit the road. And we want to hit New Mexico and Arizona and Utah and California and all kinds of cool places. So and we'll did you know that do. you, people in Utah are called Utahns? 
I know you love, love that. that. I That's know. so great. The other thing you love is the Idaho license plate. Yes. Scenic Idaho. And? World famous potatoes. <laughs> or famous. It's just famous potatoes. Famous potatoes. I swear it used to be world famous, but maybe it's just well, famous it should now. Be. It should be. They are pretty good. Yeah. So there we go, my friends. Um, thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening. Thank yes, you for thank you. Um, your continued support. We're trying to figure out this transitional time as well. And yeah, um, my, my new job is, yeah. is a lot of work to learn. But we're going to stick around and we're going to be here for you. Yeah. And we really enjoy our time together with you. We're grateful. We are. And um, I hope you come along on the journey when I launch PG Ghostly Walks, Prince George Ghostly yeah, Walks. that'll be fun. Um, you can check out the website right now at pgghostlywalks.com. Yeah. The... Uh, well, the day we're recording this, my footer is still messed up. It's getting worked on by a professional. I did what I could. Uh, <laughs> but funny. do check out the website. Let me know how, how it works for you. Let me know good. if it does work. Um, I kind of think it's pretty cool looking, but then uh, I designed it so I wouldn't know. It's so cool. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Well, we wish you the best. This Happy evening. Halloween. Um, sorry about the bit of a delay, but we were under the expectation that there would be an episode to review for you and there was not next time so next maybe. time hopefully by hopefully November. If, it's, if it's out by then because yeah. and if not then we will have another town um with exciting ghost stories hauntings mm -hmm. and all that good maybe stuff. we'll talk about sand and we could talk about sand and sand yeah. is a wild place it is and actually i think there's going to be an episode from the other side slow can valley yeah, yeah. All right, friends. Thank right. you. Have a wonderful Halloween. Yes, and happy Halloween. We will talk to you soon. Remember, we're only an email away, so please hit us up. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.